Hello, hello everyone. This is Angela Steffens, AKA Wonder Woman Code, developer, advocate, and community lead at Unlock Protocol. And today we're gonna to be talking about token gating Next.js. So first of all, the example repo I'm showing you today can be found in the Unlock Protocol GitHub account under examples. And as you can see, there's a bunch of other examples in the repo. And if you just scroll down to Next.js gating, that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Now, in this repo, we go over a combination of client-side locking, server-side locking, and locking an API endpoint. And the first thing that we're gonna do uh, is actually head over to the Unlock dashboard, which you can find straight from our homepage if you click on Launch App. And I already have it open. I'm just gonna grab a lock that I already created. And if you haven't already created your lock, they're really easy to do straight from the dashboard. You can just click on this create lock button up here. There's a few configuration options and we have a guide that you can find at um, in our guide section under creators. And how to create a lock if you need. And what I'm gonna do is actually head over to this lock right here that I already created. Got to sound my transaction. And click on this link, generate URL. Now this is our checkout builder. If you haven't seen it, it's a pretty amazing tool. It allows you to go through all these configuration options for your checkout or your minting effectively. And, uh, you can see it happening in real time, what I'm typing on the right-hand side happening on the left-hand side, so you know exactly what that's gonna look like. So for instance, on this one, if I wanna change the title to, uh, I don't wanna just say unlock protocol, I wanna just say the superhero zone. And um, I don't want this unlock logo anymore. I'm gonna go grab a, logo as you can see i use pinata uh it's a great tool if you haven't seen it before uh for uh putting files up on ipfs um and i'm just going to grab one of the one of the low the wonder woman logos i have as you see um a little bit of freak for one wonder woman so i've got like a million of them up there and i'm just going to paste that in there and you see everything updating right on the side there. Redirect URL. In this instance, you're going to leave this blank uh, for the Next.js repo. Normally, you would put the URL in there that you want people to land on after they've finished the checkout. So in the Next.js repo, it actually uh, uses your current place in the app uh, to redirect you automatically and add that in there. So you can leave this blank. And in fact, you need to leave this blank in order for it to work properly. There's a whole bunch of other options for the checkout. Um, I think that all the directions here are fairly clear, but um, I'm gonna leave these all default for now. And uh, just so you know, uh, on this page right here, on, um, you can actually add another lock. So let's say for instance, if you have um, a use case, which is like ticketing and you have VIP tickets and you have general admission tickets, and those are two separate prices, you create two separate locks for those. And then you add both of those locks to the checkout. So people can choose which options they want when they check out. Same sort of configuration for, let's say for instance, different levels if you're using unlock for subscriptions. So if you had bronze, silver, gold maybe, then you'd have an opportunity to add all those levels here so people would see a list of their available options during the checkout process. So after you've set everything like you want it on your checkout, all you have to do at this point is download this JSON file for configuration. Also, this is what we're going to do today for the Next.js app. Um, but also there's this copy URL link that you can get right here that URL encodes all of these configuration JSON objects to um, output a URL that you can, you can add to a button, 
Uh, you can throw in your Discord server. You can send to people in an email, uh, whatever it might be. So um, if you have a different use case, that's definitely um, a super handy thing to have. But right now we're gonna we're gonna click on this link, download JSON, and this is gonna uh, give me a JSON file with all my configuration options already in there. And I am I'm gonna actually copy this whole thing and put it into this little tool I like to use online to make it a little prettier uh, and say make pretty. And that way it formats it for me so I can be lazy. And then I'm gonna head over back to our repo and under source, you're gonna see a subfolder called config that has an unlock file in there and this is what I'm going to replace there. As you can see, there's an example in there and, and that one is actually a good lock. So you'll be able to actually run this without changing anything here um, if you want to see how that works. So after I've pasted my JSON just over what the example is in there, you're going to want to save that and then I'm going to... Ba, 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 view my terminal window and I'm going to yarn install and while that's installing um, this is a template for your environment file a couple of different things okay um, the the configuration example that's in here um, like if you're deploying to Vercel, you're going to want to take your Vercel um, base URL and pop that in there. Of course, if you have a, a domain purchased already, you're going to want to put that in there. Um, in If you're doing dev um, on localhost, you just remove that base URL and, and that's going to work just fine. And then you want to make sure that you rename this file env local all right and it looks like um looks like that's done loading so now i'm gonna say yarn dev And this is going to run my my app on localhost 3000. So this is an example of um, front end gating right here, and you can find this particular file. Um, under pages and index. And then of course you can just copy that, create any pages you want locked or unlocked depending on your, your need. Because of course, most of the time we have content that we want some people to see. And then we have content we want some people um, to, to be logged in for, um, or only be able to see if they own a specific NFT Maybe if you're if you've launched a P PFP project, um, if you're using it for ticketing, of course you can say, oh, if you have the ticket, then you can go see this uh, highlights reel or uh, some other sort of scenario like that. In this instance, um, you can see that there's there's just a little tiny bit of content I can see there if I'm logged in. So I'm going to go back and show you what that looks like. Um, I was already logged in because I already had that one. But if I say log in using NFT membership, then it's going to pop up the checkout for me. I'm going to say next. And it says voila unlocked because I already have the NFT. But I, I need, still need to sign this message. And then I'm going to hit return. And now it's going to drop me on this page where I can see this, whereas otherwise I wouldn't be able to. 
And I'm going to show you that one more time. If I log out, I can't see it. If I log in, then I can see it. But it's also checking to make sure I have that NFT in my wallet. And it's really quite that simple. Now, so that's the front end part of it. So that was just in the front end displaying me some information that I otherwise wouldn't have. Also, you have the ability to do back end gating. And also, you can see in the examples that. We're using Iron Session middleware. And we're just checking for the token at that point. So you can do this at any point, any page. And it's a much more secure way to do things. I mean, of course, front end gating works perfectly fine, but if you have highly secure information, you might want to put it behind a back end gate instead. And that way, the browser can't be manipulated in any way, shape, or form to show that content otherwise. Uh, the other option you have in this repo is to lock an API endpoint. And that comes in really, really handy. If, uh, if you want to say, for instance, only give API access to people who have purchased a subscription NFT token and with unlock, you have the ability to do reoccurring subscriptions. So for a SaaS application that potentially has an API attached to its services, this is a perfect option for enabling, uh, NFT subscriptions. Uh, for a SaaS service with an API. And really, you have all the pieces that you need here to do uh, quite, a, quite a few different things with, uh, with this. If you have any questions, of course, you can hop over to our Discord server and you can find a link to that here under the community link, Discord. Make sure you unlock the Discord.